Why are you excited to be here tonight? Because I'm just excited. Yeah. Yeah. No other explanation. Now, I do believe, tell me the truth. Is it uh, true that your dad has a ringside seat but didn't get you guys ringside seats? That is true, but it's because of this YouTube channel, okay? It's his YouTube, okay? Her dad's an influencer. Let him go, guys. Awesome, right? Yeah. He's See, he's awesome. Yeah. Give it up for Claire. Thank you so much, Claire. High five. Yeah. This is Lois Brain here, and I'm advising you to do yourself a favor and watch the Alliance Guys podcast. We hit it. You already know who it is. It's the radioactive pop of Danny Limelight. United Wrestling Network, World Heavyweight Champion. And make sure you tune into the Alliance Vlog every week. You heard it here first. Straight from Poppy. Can you believe that there are some people in this world that did not tune in to the Alliance Vlog Podcast? Shame on you. Shame on you. My name is Ella Indy, and I'm one half of the NWA Women's World Tag Team Champion. And I'm Kimmy Page, the other half of the NWA World Women's Tag Team Champion. And you better go listen to the Alliance Vlog. What do you call it? Podcast. Period. You're ugly. Period. Power approved. Hey guys, check this out. I am officially now sponsored by Dubby. Dubby is a clean energy drink made to give you focus with no crash. If you guys are like me, you're always needing a burst of energy, especially with one with no crash. Dubby contains vitamins, amino acids, a nootropic, and 150 milligrams of caffeine. It keeps me awake with no jitters, guys. Check it out. Merch link is in the bio. Dubby. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the pre-party on the road. As you can see, I'm not in the illustrious uh, Alliance Blog Studios. We're not at the pre-party. I mean, we're, I mean this is the pre-party, but we are not in my studio apartment. No, I, oh, <laughs> we are not at the typical uh, broadcasting place. Uh, your boy Jay Cal is on the road. I am in Avon, Colorado, the closest I've ever been to championship wrestling from Jeremy and still yet so far away. But we are here. I'm here with my family enjoying the snow, enjoying ice skating, uh, really expensive food, and everything else is very expensive. But I've been here since uh, Sunday. Uh, we or Saturday. <laughs> Oops. We've been here since Saturday. And uh, so we've been on vacation. And so I take a vacation from work, and right now, I've taken a vacation from my wife and kids, but I did not take a vacation from you, the hashtag NWA fam. My name is Jay Cal. It is the pre-party. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. It's time for some NWA talk. Uh, a lot of interesting things that are popping up, man, and I'm very excited to see this uh, maturation, maturation process for the NWA I know uh, we are in this weird era for the National Wrestling Alliance, this uh, studio audience that was built on the backs of an international fan base via the YouTube streaming platform. And now the NWA is, is had to evolve. It's had to change, right? It's no longer the same as it was even just a year ago. All of our international brethren are no longer able to watch the NWA without using some backdoor tactics some uh, chicanery if you will and it sucks because i know a lot of my friends are now affected by that but nevertheless the nwa is still putting on content every uh tuesday it drops early in the morning in fact for some of you this isn't a pre-party this is an after party which is totally okay but we're going to keep coming to you tuesdays at this time which for me it's three o three o'clock eastern no 
three o'clock mountain time and i'm used to being at two o'clock uh, pacific so kind of weird for me too my boy uh tim is here the alliance gold of course he is one of those who has been affected by that and the and the sad thing is is what i don't think the nwa realizes is it's it's affecting um it's affecting interest in the brand right because you have a product and you want that product to be seen by everybody but unfortunately uh it's it's now rationed only to fans in the united states and, and like i said just a second ago you need to have some sort of backdoor access whether it be a vpn or somebody recording it and sending it to you or going through some uh, you know malicious websites that maybe you might find a link for it and i don't think that's necessarily a good look for the nwa and i, I we've talked about this ad nauseum um i don't want to keep beating the dead horse it sucks it needs to be re, re, uh, re, 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 i'm rapping now it needs to be redeemed in the eyes of that international fan base and i don't know if that's maybe bringing a show to the uk maybe that's bringing a show to canada or maybe i don't know just getting access to your fans so that they can watch your content um but it's uh it's it sucks man and uh i i, I I feel it because there's so many people that I'm connected to who are now no longer have that option. And I think that's really kind of shitty. Um, do better. With that being said, there is a lot of uh, interesting things happening with the NWA. And for my friends internationally who are fans of the NWA, I would uh, like to advocate for them to checking out what uh, they're doing uh, with Joe Kazana Promotions. Uh, as I believe this Thursday, they start their newest season. And to be quite honest with you, and I'm not trying to blow smoke up Mr. Joe Kazana's keister, but what they're doing to me is the nwa the nwa for so long for me wasn't about arena shows it wasn't about having top name talent to me what it was about was diamonds in the rough to me it was about finding talent and watching that talent go from being no named to being superstars uh you know when when i started connecting with the national wrestling alliance as a fan years after rick flair had left the nwa years after shane douglas had threw the title down it was when i discovered stars like damian wayne and chance prophet drew onyx scrap iron adam pierce right that's what, to me what the nwa was it was it wasn't some big name wrestler that had previously had ties to the WWE or WCW. It was guys who were putting the NWA on their back. And it was a very different vehicle back then. And when I look at Joe Kazana Promotions, the NWA Southeast, whatever you want to call it, this to me is what the NWA is. This is the lifeblood of the National Wrestling Alliance. And I said that to Joe Kazana, this really is the personification of the past, the present, and the future of the NWA. And I do want to advocate, not not advocate, advocate for all of you to check out what Joe Kazan is doing. If you haven't done so already, go give them a uh, a subscription, subscribe. Sorry, I'm in Colorado, guys, and uh, I'm in Avon, Colorado. If I pointed the camera outside, you'd see snow on the trees and snow on the buildings. I'm not in my element here but i'm trying the best that i can so please forgive me if i'm a little mm, because i haven't slept for shit <laughs> everything is super expensive and my kids are having a blast so i mean there's a trade-off there right uh but i i would uh highly suggest you guys checking out what they're doing over joe kazana promotions subscribe to that youtube channel get them monetized get them monetized so the spirit of the nwa can continue to exist and again when they bring in guys the guys that i like and i think maybe the guys that you guys that you guys like jeremiah plunkett toby farley guys who are connected to the nwa from just a few years ago plus the president of the nwa the alex taylor's the carrie morton's the of course uh they they brought in um uh, kenzie page the national champion uh silas mason um you know former tag team champions the heat seekers i really dig what they're doing down in joe kazana promotions and i'm i'm really just trying to pump it up i hope you guys can appreciate that because i think what they're doing is really good for uh for business 
Now, uh, like I said, this isn't my normal setup. So I, I do have my computer over here. My camera's over here. I'm doing the best I can. So if I don't look like I'm looking at you, just realize uh, that's not the case. Jeremy says, hello, Alliance fam, and welcome to the pre-party with J-Cow. Absolutely. Jeremy also goes on to say that uh, don't forget to like, share with your friends, and hit that subscribe button if you feel so inclined. Now, one thing that you guys need to know is tomorrow on the other Alliance guys, they're going to have uh, Vinny Barry on the show. Vinny has uh, written multiple books about pro wrestling some uh dis uh, distinctly write about nwa um characters nwa talents i mean um in his first two uh wrestling uh welcome to wrestleville books volume one and two i mean there's stories with jazz there's stories with damian wayne there's stories with uh i know i'm missing a lot of talent right now but there's a lot of great stories uh about the nwa uh inside of these books as well as outside of the nwa tim storm i'm sure i'm missing a bunch more too but it, it's great uh those are books that are very interesting he he did the biography uh on lance von eric lance by lance by chance and uh he recently did a book uh on black bart they're going to be talking about all of that tomorrow so i really feel like uh if you guys are interested in some good wrestling talk that's going to be a great show for you guys to check out tomorrow again that's with dave scooby with jeremy championship wrestling from jeremy and of course our own alliance gold tim tim dog baby uh bobby batito's in the house steve g's in the house um alliance gold is in the house slam <laughs> We're in Colorado. It's called Beaver Creek, which I smile and laugh at every time, but that's because I have the sense of humor of a 12 year old. Um, let's see. Mike says it's almost as hard to as when I used to buy Coke in the 90s. <laughs> what he means is classic Coke and, and the new Coke. He's trying to buy the new Coke, not the classic Coke. Um, Bobby Batino said he liked the match with Jordan Cruz against Jude Diz. That was, uh, yeah, that have aired this past weekend on the United Wrestling Network Championship Wrestling. I was there live for that match, and I got to tell you, it was one of my favorite. So we're only two months into the year, but it was one of my favorite matches. It was such a banger. And, you know, being able to say, like, I was at a Game Changer Wrestling. I was at uh, AEW, uh, AEW show. Um, that was one of the best matches I've seen this year. And uh, we'll just wait for Peter Avalon and uh, and uh, our friend Danny Limelight because that one was a banger too. Uh, let's see. Chris says, Jay, if they can't even add highlights to their YouTube after the show airs, then Billy signed a bad deal. I Look, I don't know, man. I, I wish I could tell you what was good, what was bad. I, I wish I could tell you that they made a, a, a poor business decision. I don't know what money they made from this, right? You got to, we, we've talked about this again ad nauseum, but when you think of the NWA and you think of the opportunities, forget the opportunities. Let's talk about dollars and cents, right? If we're only basing our value of the pay-per-views on what they made from Sal Win, when it was reported that they only had 235 buys, 235 buys on Triller, aka Fight, whatever you want to call it, at like what, 30 bucks a pop? I don't remember, 25? That's not a lot of cheddar, my friend. That's not a lot of money at all. And when you think about that, Poyo Del Mar, Paul Pratt himself said on this show that their production truck is like $100,000 just to run the event. It's $100,000 to have that truck there. So right off the bat, they lost. They lost. There's no way they recouped any of that money. Now, with that being said, if they're on CW and CW is now subsidizing it, helping pay off the production costs, uh, giving them you know, royalties for airing it on their network, it's kind of hard to disagree with that it was a bad choice. The idea of pro wrestling is this. Make money. Make money. If you're not making money in pro wrestling, you're doing it wrong. If you're breaking even, what is that doing for you as a business owner? I'm a business owner. And if I was only breaking even for as hard as I work, I'm done. I'm going to go find another job or find other ways to be more uh, profitable. So I, I can't say that what Billy did was a bad decision because I don't know the financials involved. 
if if he only got just the the fact that they're on the CW and nothing more, then then he blew it. If he's getting paid a uh, his production, if his production costs are offset by what they're getting paid, or if CW is outright paying for it, then I don't see this as a a, a negative at all. Uh, Noob says, "Hello, Alliance crew. What's up, Noob?" Tonight's the night. If you haven't watched already, we know enough. Natalia Markova will be in action. I know that's going to make you happy, dude. Uh, Lamp says, as fans of the NWA, you can also watch Dave Marquez, Championship Wrestling on YouTube. She bad by me. Hey, you guys know I'm a big supporter, a big proponent of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, the United Wrestling Network, at, at whole, uh, all of it. So, yes, I would encourage you guys to, to get back into watching that as well, because Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is the what studio wrestling is supposed to be like dave marquez kind of uh perfected the formula a while ago they've been doing championship wrestling from hollywood i think for 15 years i think i could be wrong maybe 16. Uh, i know that my yeah you know it, it's about 15 years because i took my oldest daughter who's now 19 when she was five to her first wrestling show which was in santa Ana at the galaxy theater for the very first episode of championship wrestling from hollywood a show that was kicked off with Peter Avalon losing to Colt Boom Boom Cabana, who then challenged World's Heavyweight Champion Scrap Iron Adam Pierce for a match for the 10 pounds of gold. And there's a little bit of history there. <laughs> uh, I see your guys' comments. I'm going to try to get to everything in a minute. Do you, do you not think NXT isn't going to have their highlights on their YouTube? Uh, Chris, are you honestly asking whether the NWA has the same bargaining ability and negotiation ability? as the wwe because if you're trying to make a, an equivalency there that's that's not going to work you're talking about a multi-billion dollar company now with tko multi-billion dollar company it, that's not even the same thing chris and if you're trying to make that comparison that's just you're you're, you're doing it wrong it's not the same um mike says many of them cut their teeth in king Kingsport from Tony. Yeah, man. Uh, Toby Farley, right? Like He's a guy who uh, I've been very high on for a while. Uh, one of Tony's originals. Uh, Jeremy says, so in other words, Jay's in Colorado and weed is legal here, so Jay has doubled up on the edibles. Uh, no comment, but just so you know, weed is legal in where I live, too, so if that were the case, I would always be like that. Maybe I maybe I don't have enough edibles, Jeremy. Maybe I've had too many. I, I can't tell you because this is a uh, I don't want to get demonetized. So we'll just let's move forward. Uh, Steve says CW does have some downsides. No live chat can't be seen outside of the U.S. Not sure this is good for wrestling. E yes, yes, it's not good for the fan, but it's good for it, without knowing the financials. I can't tell you if it's good for the NWA or not. I just can't. It's not good for their fans, in which in turn could hurt the brand. You look, uh, we, we've talked about it again a lot, but somebody like Fiona, our friend from Scotland, who uh, also covers the NWA with a podcast, she buys all the merchandise. She buys a lot of things for the end from the NWA. She supports the brand very ferociously. Like she is a diehard fan. She's the type of person you want on your side. And the fact that she can't watch the product live anymore, she has to go through a back channel to find it, is not a good idea. Same thing with our pal Tim. Uh, again, I'm not saying that the NWA has to bend their knee to one person, but it, it's not just one person. It's multiple people. And I feel like that's just a – some of that should have been taken into consideration when they made their deal. But again, if it, if it didn't make sense, you know, they had to go with what made dollars uh crystal pepsi sir i used to love the uh remember when they had the uh, van halen song for crystal pepsi um right now hey it's your tomorrow <laughs> at the end it's a business no matter who the owner is you can't make money with it screw whatever doesn't work for your business i mean look guys it sucks to say it but yeah yeah, you got to pad that pocketbook, man. They they got to make money. They got to make money. And they weren't making money on YouTube. Like, look, we again, we've talked about all this before, but just rehashing it. 
what were what could they possibly make per episode you know some of my most viral videos that have had 70,000 views have only made a couple of dollars for me right and now i'm a low end content creator for youtube i am not the pay scale for sure anybody with a decent following is making more money than i'm making on youtube but i also know that it's not they're not mr beast money you know they're not making Ryan's toy review money, right? They're just not. They're not even making WWE money or Impact money. They're not. Uh, oh, hey, that's. Uh, I'm gonna get to that in just a second, John. I see your comment. I will. I'll, I'll plug that in just a second. But uh, I want to keep going about what we're talking about. If it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Steve G says, Jay, we can only hope the CW deal works out better for NWA than fight the fight deal did. Yeah, and I think so too, man. I, I, I really do. I think it's going to, they do need to work out some kinks. Of course, they need to figure out international distribution. That's a huge, huge deal. But once they get that clear, you know, the sky's the limit. And uh, maybe that's something they have to reno renegotiate later down the road. But if they are getting, you know, if you go to the CW app and go to sports, they were pushing the NWA right there on front. And that's not something that I've ever saw YouTube do unless you were already following the channel uh mike says that is that's really that really that's really it billy just to be on the app with a little help from production yeah i mean i don't know I, again i don't know what the what what was presented i don't know what they were given but i mean, I mean if billy's still paying out of pocket for everything and he's not getting help from cw then yes he signed an awful awful deal you know the it, it can't be cheap running these venues these aren't like bingo halls guys these are like concert venues these are nicer venues that they've been appearing in if they're not making money man wow sorry no dubby i don't have dubby with me so i am drinking monster energy i still recommend dubby over monster but you know i wanted something with zero sugar and something that uh, had caffeine but i do feel jittery i don't feel as good doing the podcast Ugh, yuck it's awful. W for life. Uh, meanwhile, it's a beautiful painting in the background. Thank you. Uh, a lot of butterflies in this room. A lot of butterflies here. In fact, I'm in a. It's a. I'm basically in a snow globe, guys. I, if you walked outside, it's very much a snow globe. Lamb. It kind of feels like I'm in some sort of chalet. Uh, in, in the uh, you know some sort of Swedish chalet or something. I don't know. I feel very um, disconnected from the rest of the world right now. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. We appreciate it. Uh, yes, Jay had edibles, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Bojangles. Kid. You know, we don't have Bojangles out here, and it sucks. It's terrible. Like, Bojangles is so good. I Every time I've been on the East Coast, I will find a Bojangles, except for the last time I was in um, – when I went to Philly, I didn't see any Bojangles, but anytime I went to Atlanta, whether it be for Championship Wrestling Atlanta or NWA Power or the Crockett Cup, I definitely found a Bojangles and enjoyed it. Let's see. Dave Scooby says, you got to think globally, not just locally. And I agree with that. I 100% do, I 100 do, Mr. Dave Scooby. But I also feel like if there was an opportunity for them to get paid for producing this content, on a, in a way that they weren't getting paid before they had to jump at it they had to you can't you, you have to make these business decisions that are best for everyone involved and it it does alienate the fan base and that does that's going to have repercussions long term but at the end of the day you still got to do what's going to uh, make things right um let's see lamb says what the heck a uh, monster energy pink this is a that we have multiple flavors uh this is a strawberry dreams Yes, it is pink. It is zero sugar. Uh, but like I said, it's not as good as my Dubby. Uh, Dubby, too, if you are interested in trying Dubby energy drink, you can go. You can do that. Uh, there's the link in the uh, video description. We have links to our sponsors, Trophy Smack, if you want to design your own championship title belt. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to have one made for the Alliance blog when we hit 5,000 subscribers. That's my goal. And we're so close. We're so freaking close. Uh, right now, I'm just going to pull up and tell you how many subscribers we have. How many? How many of you guys are part of this family with us? And 
Of course, it's not working. Uh, let's go. Come on. Chop, chop. Three point four thousand subscribers. You guys are animals. I love you all. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I do want to get to this right here. John Farmer. The name's familiar. It should be uh, NWA free agent. Former NWA talent free agent Camille Brickhouse was their first YouTube video on her channel in two years. Premieres tomorrow, Wednesday at seven PM Eastern. Uh, well, number one question: Where is the? Where is she going? TNA, WWE, or AEW? She will be live in the chat. Oh, oh man, I know that's going against the other lines, guys. But maybe you guys could check that afterwards. Of course, Camille, we think the world of Camille here at the Alliance blog. Camille has always been, uh, she's never come on the show. She has the invite. It's still out there. It's hanging in the air if she ever decides to jump on. But she is someone who, personally, I will say, has represented the NWA better than any other champion in her uh, career. She spent, uh, you know, Gosh, I guess about four or five years with the NWA, uh, active in the ring for about four years, and she she did it. You know, she went out there. I'll, I'll be honest; I didn't know who Camille was when uh, she showed up on Nick Aldis's arm at the uh, 70th anniversary show. And when she debuted, uh, she really was a game changer. And you know, she went from just the insurance policy didn't even talk she just the silent assassin if you will and became uh like the face of the nwa as far as i'm concerned especially when when the alternative champion was tyrus yeah i'd much rather uh show off who camille was and and the ability that camille had in the ring that's for sure uh let's see <laughs> well justin well it would be enough for a handshake and a hot dog right no thank you you don't know what those hot dogs have been, Lamb. Noob says, your thoughts on NWA Ch Chicago territory being announced. Now, I think we're going to dive into this tomorrow, or excuse me, on Thursday. But yeah, the NWA in Chicago, this kind of happened out of nowhere, right? And we didn't, we weren't expecting it. This was just dropped on us. And the thing about Chicago, there's a hell of a lot of NWA talent who live in Chicago. We know Joe Alonzo. We know Misa Kate. Uh, you know, we haven't seen him in a while, but uh, uh, Robert Anthony, Ego Fantastico, uh, was from Chicago. Uh, Koa Laksamana, who we haven't seen in a while, was also from Chicago. So, but potentially, I mean, that's four names who are synonymous with the NWA in, in 2023. Of course, Joe Alonzo and Misa Kate having breakout careers in 23. I would suspect that, uh, if Chicago is Chicago is happening under the guidance of uh, you know FTW Wrestling that's in Florida, this is a good thing. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Billy has spent a lot of time promoting the NWA in Chicago. They've had a multiple events there, of course, the Highland Park shows, um, the tribute to Highland Park. Um, you know, they raised uh, money for the the child who was uh, struck during the Highland Park uh, shooting a few years ago. It seems like there's a lot of community in Chicago for the NWA. And when you think about it, you know, we've got now Cleveland, Chicago, and then various parts of Tennessee through Joe Kazana. I mean, that's that's getting pretty, you know, we're, we're getting to it now. We're starting to see some territories to develop. And again, another promotion gives a place for these guys to work and represent the NWA. And discover new fans, discover new talent, right? These are all positives. Again, like there's there's this weird dichotomy where the NWA is taking steps forward and steps back backwards at the same time. Uh, it's kind of a byproduct of how the NWA has always been, unfortunately. But we'll see what's going to happen next, and of course, uh, we'll talk more about that on Thursday. I'll, I'll make sure to get the opinion of Mr. DKM and Jaden on that one. Uh, Steve G says it would be nice if the CW had notification services on their app. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Like, again, it's not YouTube. It's not as user-friendly. YouTube is available to everyone across the world. CW is only available in the United States. There's a lot of drawbacks to CW. But again, if they are paying for that content, if they're offsetting Billy's production costs, then how can you be so upset? You know, you, I, I mean, let me just, let me rephrase that. You can be totally upset. You're allowed to be upset. 
but you also have to understand what the NWA is trying to accomplish. Uh, Mike says, Billy still pays for venues and the talent and most of their hotel states. Very little sponsorship help when he can get them. I mean, remember how big of a deal it was when Bush was their sponsor for the 74 and 73 anniversary show. Um, and they, you know, up until that point, I don't remember them having a sponsorship deal with this new Lightning One Era NWA. So, it, yes, it would behoove you know Billy to maybe get some people from a marketing company to market the NWA and 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 maybe try to apply to get some of those sponsorships. And, and you know, there's opportunities, but again, everything is a cost, right? Like now you're paying somebody to do that. It's not as simple and it's not black and white. There's a lot of shades of gray with all of it. We have Shakey's Pizzas, however, in SoCal. I haven't been to a Shakey's in a long time, but I have Mojo Potatoes. Those are delicious. And their chicken was really good, too. Lamb said, says, get your Alliance merch now. This shirt is available in the shop. This one is not. I don't think it is. It's not supposed to be. This was an exclusive print for my friends who joined me in St. Louis. If you have one of these, uh, it's because you're special. Not that you guys aren't special, but you could all buy some. Uh, buy some shirts, you know. Uh, we need to get some more uh, merch made. And I, my, uh, it's something that's in 2024. I feel like I've already been uh, letting everyone down, but it's something I plan to, to try to get more out there. Uh, Jeremy, are you in spring? Because, yeah, it's 42 out here. It's cold, but I had the window open earlier because it was hot in the hotel room. Mike loves Dubby. Dubby's great. Mike, did, have you, did you pick up those flavors? My, see, the, the push and punch was pretty good, but I really like the beach and peach, and I, I like the, um, Oh, what is it? It's the orange mango, the Cali tub, I think is what it's called. And then, of course, Big Energy Tears is my favorite. I think I, I think I like that one the best. Uh, let's see. Camille not winning female wrestler of the year for PWI is a total crime. It's blasphemy, really. Like, are you telling me there was a single female talent that meant more to their brand than Camille? Like, if you didn't want to call her wrestler of the year, female wrestler of the year, that's fine. But she should have certainly been the most valuable female wrestler in 2023. There's no one who did more for their brand than Camille. And I'm, you know, Tony Storm, hell, she's been amazing. She did not do as much for AEW as Camille did for the NWA. If you want to say Becky Lynch or IO Sky or, or, or Rhea Ripley, well, okay, Rhea Ripley might be close. I'm not crazy. Rhea Ripley is a superstar. Don't get me wrong. So is Tony Storm, uh, but I would put Camille. What Camille did for the NWA is at least on par with what uh, Rhea Ripley did for the WWE and what Tony Storm did for AEW. Uh, NWA Chicago could be sponsored by Billy's Cafe. Madam Zuzu's uh, heard from the talent. Uh, heard from talents. It's good. I've never had. Madam Zuzu's. I, I've been in Chicago for about 30 minutes once, uh, and I walk from one part of the airport to the other part of the airport so I can get to Crockett Cup, and that's about it for me. Uh, what's up, NWA fam? Jamming Music Man. That's my guy right there. What's up, Jamming? Steve says, is that wrestling? Oops. Is that wrestling promotion that Heather Monroe wrestles? Oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of that one. Uh, I'm sure Lamb knows what it is. Uh, I know I, I know Lamb would know what, what promotion it is. Noob says, I saw the graphic for NWA Chicago, and there's one oversight. Brian Idol is on the NWA Chicago, and that's all Markova isn't on there. You can't take the looks that kill without Natalia Markova in Chicago. I'll be honest with you, Noob. I'd rather watch Natalia Markova wrestle more than Brian Idol. And I like Natalia Markova as a wrestler. I know she's pretty. I know everyone is concerned about her looks, but she's pretty good in the ring, too. She's fun to watch. Steve says, I didn't mean as a knock against Billy, meant it as against the CW app. Yeah, that's true. That's fair, Steve. I, I agree with you on that one. Bobby Batino says, I'd like to see Savannah Stone or Sandra Moon be the first ever women's champion at United Wrestling Network. Uh, Savannah Stone has really, really put in the work. Um, when you guys see her in Hollywood next, uh, I think she'll be this weekend or maybe the weekend after. Uh, she's put in some hard work, and I think Savannah Stone has really grown as a as a wrestler. 
And I think that she would be an excellent choice for the Night Wrestling Network's first women's champion. I heard Tim wanted some wanted some zone merge. Yeah, hey, look, Tim and Tim has uh, Tim has carte blanche to tell me whatever the heck he wants to put on a T-shirt, and we'll put it on the damn thing. That is for sure. Mike says, "I yes, I tried him. The Galaxy Lemonade was not good in my view. I did not. The Galaxy Lemonade was the worst. Ooh, I don't like it at all. I I have it. I drink it because I want to get rid of it. I don't want to waste it. I hate wasting things. But I'm not a fan of the Galaxy Lemonade. It is." I like, like I said, Big Energy Tears is probably my favorite. The whole blue raspberry, it's good stuff. Camille was able to stand out in a brand that was that was and had been lackluster. Camille stayed in wrestling blogs in a good light while the brand had been sternly criticized. That's a hundred percent accurate, Rosville. Like that is spot on. The NWA was criticized for so much in the last in 2023 we'll just stick to 2023 a world heavyweight champion who was immobile in the ring with like four defenses over eight months uh lackluster crowds uh poor choices for venues uh, bad booking and camille like literally was a shining beacon of hope for pro wrestling uh you know she took the thing about camille too is keep in mind I don't want to bury the NWA right here, but keep in mind, Camille went to AAA to challenge for the Reina de Reina's champion against Taya Valkyrie. Uh, she did not win the title, but she she showed up wearing the Burke, right? She represented by wearing the Burke. She would go back to Mexico and defend the title against Lady Flamer uh, at the Worlds of Vampire Tours. She'd go back again teaming with Diana Perrazzo and Jordan Lynn Grace. Uh, as part of the uh, the uh, Lucha Libre versus the World uh, show that they had, and they won, they be, they won first place in that. So she was recognized as part of that team that oh, took first in their Lucha Libre uh, tournament. Lastly, uh, you know, besides everything she did with the NWA, she took the Burke wherever she went. So if she wrestled in Chicago, guess what? She took the Burke. If she wrestled with XPW, she had the Burke. So uh, anywhere she went. The Burke went with her. Canadian defenses, Mexico defenses, and she was initially supposed to be a part of the Australian tour. Things went awry, and uh, I won't speculate or say anything more than that, but she was supposed to be there. Since I'm cutting back on soda coke itself, I use seltzer water and put half the dose of Debbie in the bottle. That's a smart move, Mike. Um, my biggest, the biggest drawback for me on Debbie is that it's not carbonated, and I miss out on that uh but yeah it's like i said i i really much enjoy the uh big energy tears bobby batito talking about my guy mecca wolf he's a great opponent for colby carino the nwa junior heavyweight championship we we should talk about that right and we'll talk about the card right now because i think tonight's card is pretty freaking stellar i think tonight's card is uh it's gonna be a fun show um so first and foremost uh, we have we have some matches. Uh, sorry, my uh, my computer isn't loading as quickly as I would like it to. Uh, first off, we're getting a street fight. Now, street fights are a weird thing. Like again, I wasn't super big on having uh, that ultimate match of death for the first time encounter between Matt Cardona and our world heavyweight champion EC3. Because the fact of the matter is, they have not had a one-on-one -on -one match. So where, where does this where does this feud go if the first match out the bag is a ultimate match of death, right? With that being said, at the very least, this match between Tom Latimer and Brian Idol, not Mikirio, his twin cousin, at, at least then this match has some build towards it right because we know that they had a look, the looks that kill uh, brian idol and markova took on um camille and tom uh i believe that wasn't sal win um but they i think that was at the uh it's at one of the tapings in florida i think it was the return to bobarts uh, robarts excuse me and uh they, at least this has some build towards it uh, you know brian took exception to tom you know 
putting hands on Markova. Uh, Tom took exception to uh, Idol putting hands on Camille. So there is some ground on this, but I feel like they should have had at least a one-on-one -on -one match before we get to this ultimate match of death. And then the other thing is they keep promoting it as FTL versus FTW. And it's like, as an NWA fan, as someone who follows the brand very extensively, I've never heard of FTL before. I have no idea what it is. So if you're going to present this to me, I should have some context here. If you're going to put a match and it's going to be billed as FTL versus FTW, then, then give me a reason to care about FTL. Otherwise, just tell me it's Idol versus uh, uh, Latimer and tell me why this match is happening. Because they're pissed that they put hands on each other's ladies. Got it. That's all we need. We don't need more. FTW, for most NWA fans, they don't even know what FTW is. So it, it's it's crazy to me. Yeah, Noob, Noob points it out. Noob follows uh, what's been happening in Florida. He doesn't know what that means. It's, it's bonkers. Why are we talking about FTL? Nobody knows what FTL is. Um, let us see. Uh, uh, I'll get to some more of your guys' comments in just a minute. Uh, Roswell says they never explained how we get to matches. That's and I hate that, man. I hate that so much. Build me a story and let me get invested, right? Um, if if you've never seen a Star Wars movie before and someone puts on the rise of the Skywalker, hey, you're not connected to it. But if you've watched every single Star Wars movie, you are absolutely connected and you want to know what happens next. Same thing with the Marvel movies. You know, if, if you just watch one movie, yeah, you might enjoy, you might not. But if it's connected to the greater universe, you're absolutely more invested in it. And, and that's simple booking. It's simple logic. I don't get it. Uh, Lamb says, I don't get the number one contender six woman tag. We'll get to that in a minute, Lamb. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, Noob says, I don't know what uh, the heck FTL means either. Yeah. Uh, Noob also said that he recommends watching the XPW episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then uh, the next up, the match that uh, we could probably discuss is uh, Daisy Kill and Talos, uh, who we haven't seen a lot of since losing the U.S. tag titles. They will be taking on the team of uh, Spencer Slade and Rush Freeman, better known as the Spectaculars. Uh, this match again, not a lot of build, but we could presume that this is a match for uh, an opportunity to challenge for the U.S. tag titles later down the road. Uh, Spencer Slade was super impressive on his debut. I don't want to. I, I know Rush Freeman gets a bad rap, but I feel like he's really put in some work, and I think the tag team between Spencer and Rush could be good. I just don't really care for Rolando and. I know that they can use him in different ways. They can give him a different storyline, but they keep shoving this whole spectacular thing down our throats. And I just don't know that it's what I care to spend my effort or energy on. But that being said, I think Daisy kills is a, is a hot commodity. I think he's a much greater talent, right? I don't think he's reached his full potential yet with uh, the NWA. And I'd also say that Talos, uh, you know, I guess I, I recently learned this. Talos was part of the NXT system for a while. I don't know that he ever had uh, too many matches on TV, but we did see, hey, Pam's in the house. Uh, we did see Talos uh, wrestle a few times the United Wrestling Network, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And I really feel like that pairing has worked. Uh, it's, it's kind of unnatural to me but i i'll i'll keep enjoying it uh i think that they have potential so this tag team match between the spectaculars and uh and uh daisy kills the talents i think that's going to be a lot of fun uh if they just let the guys get out there and wrestle if it's a rolando showcase i'm going to be i'm going to be bored and, and want to change the channel uh let's get to some of your guys's comments of course friend of the show polka dot pam is in the house and uh pam is always welcome to hear on the show um let's see uh, some of your comments uh i'm missing some of the comments there they go i like daisy kill and talos as a tag team like give me a story as a guy who enjoys stories and any need it yeah i mean that's it's simple give me a story let me latch on to that and let me enjoy it 
Pam says hi. I say hi back to Pam. I got to finally meet Pam, and it was it was nice. We gave each other hugs. I gave Pam one of these shirts. It was nice. Uh, Guardians of Chaos. The NWA I love is Starcade 83 and 85. Current day will never approach that era. I've been on a Starcade binge just saying, thanks, Jay, and keep grinding. Hey, thank you, Guardian of Chaos. And you're not wrong, man. I think the thing about today's NWA is it's, it's never going to be that, you know, Jim Crockett promotions, like cream of the crop, the best of the wrestling that we could get. But there are, there, there are moments of brilliance where I really feel like you know, if Billy just did something a little bit different, just tweak this a little bit, change this up, you know, brought back Chris Adonis and put him in a high profile matches. I think we could have an NWA that would be very close in proximity to what we had back in the 80s with Jim Crockett promotions. With that being said, they're not there yet. And they probably won't be for a while. And I'm not sure what path they're going to go with. Uh, with Pam, I said that just for you, by the way. Uh, not that I dislike Chris Adonis. I think he should come back to the NWA. I think they should put him in high-profile matches, but I said that for you. But as far as uh, as far as far uh, you know, the NWA goes, there, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And will it ever reach Jim Crockett promotions level? Probably not. And that's okay, too. It doesn't have to. They can, they can find their own path. And I think that's cool, man. And... and you know, I'm, I don't love everything that the NWA does, right? I don't, but um, it is kind of in line with the style of wrestling I like. Billy could do some things better, and I would enjoy it more, but it is what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, Pam and I, good friends. Uh, let's see. Um uh, Chris Adonis must be very happy right now, just traveling the world, killing it, and not being wasted. Yeah, I mean, again, from the standpoint, Chris Adonis is winning titles in Canada, winning titles in Puerto Rico. It, it, it baffles my mind how they could not figure out how to use Adonis correctly in the NWA. Like, even when they were pushing him as national champion, like, he should have been more. And The whole thing with the TV title, and I don't want to beat a dead horse again, but could how awesome would it be to see Adonis just running through the roster, building, being built up to fight EC3 for the 10 pounds of gold? Having Adonis win the TV title for Mims and going through the roster, like literally going through the roster, uh, I, I, I think that would be amazing, and that would be a perfect way to use him. And he would look good with that TV title around his waist. Uh, and, and Pam, I'm, and Pam, this is stuff I'm not just saying for you. This is stuff that I actually believe um, he would have been, uh, he should have been used a lot better. Um, but yeah, and, and I appreciate that, Guardians of Chaos. Uh, I, like, look, and I'm I'm quick to call out things I don't like. I don't like Max as being the uh, unified television champion. I've said that. Uh, I don't have any problem with Max. I just, I prefer, you know. Uh, not to muddy up the waters with the titles and it's it's pushed max to the moon by all means i think max max should be one of the brightest stars in the nwa i just think it gets very convoluted when you're doing something to get a reaction out of the audience andre the giant never really won a world's heavyweight championship and when they did they took it off of like in the 30 seconds right uh, your special attractions don't need title belts. Bruiser Brody never needed to be world's heavyweight champion. Stan Hansen, they gave him the AWA world title. He didn't need that belt to be over. Max doesn't need a title to be over. Max is over just by being Max, period. Uh, <laughs> our pal James says, same, Lamb. I don't watch the NWA either anymore. UWN all the way for me. Yeah. And see, Pam's see, Pam is just laying it out today. Yes, we should have seen Eli Drake as champion. Oh, Steve G said that too. Missed it. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know uh, Billy Corgan's. Uh, I don't know his faith, and I, I wouldn't comment on that, but I think that was funny to say, Jeremy. The fact that Billy never tried to use Chris Adonis as a bridge to get. Yeah, see, well, and that's the thing too. Like maybe he felt at that point that the there would have been no bridge because of the fact that uh, Bret Hart's. Uh, dungeon promotion uh the fact that that uh was so highly touted by aldous 
Um, maybe he felt like there was no path there, but they did bring in that junior heavyweight, uh, Mo, Mo Obari, I think was his name. Uh, and he did have uh, that match with, um, he had the match with uh, Kerry Morton in Canada, and later he wrestled against Colby for the title. I felt like that might have been the path to get there, but again, that didn't happen either. Um, all right, uh, more title, more show notes, uh, show notes, more uh, talk about the title, <laughs> more talk about matches for tonight. Uh, the next match that was billed, that was advertised, is uh, it's this, it's the six man tag number one contenders match, and this, what? Three women on each side of the ring. How does that equal six? It doesn't. It doesn't equal uh, What? How do you get a number one contender out of that? Is the number one contender for the women's title? Is the number one contender for the tag titles? What's going on? I don't get it. What they should have just called this was an uh, NWA uh, women's showcase match. And left it at that. We Don't, don't put a title next to it. Because nobody here... Is being like okay, yes, Natalia Markova and Taylor Rising had teamed in the past. If the okay, so then put them in a, a tag team match against CJ and Miss Star and make that a number one contenders match if that's what you want to do. Okay, fine. This should have just been called hashtag momentum NWA showcase match. And let's we're gonna just show you our our these great talented females. Look, the title, the television title is being clogged right now with Maxine Paler. Um, and I don't mean clogged in a bad way, I just mean it. She's the the women right now. <laughs> Max is busy defending a TV title against men and a TV title against women. Um, I don't foresee any uh, female competitor taking the title off of Max. Uh, but Misa Kate, Miss Star, uh, CJ, Ruthie J, Natalia Markova, Taylor Rising, six very talented females in one match for the NWA. I think this is going to be spectacular. I think it's going to be fun. I don't know what the end result is going to be. I haven't watched Power yet. I plan to do that later tonight. Uh, and if you guys haven't watched Power yet, either you might want to join us on Discord immediately following this episode of the pre-party. We'll, we'll be talking about that. Uh, but I feel like this is going to be a fun match. Uh, I, I really feel like with the talent involved, how can it not be, right? It's going to be a very good match, in my opinion, I think. Um, so let's see. Uh, some more comments. Says, uh, let me see. I don't have my normal setup here, so if I see him again a little off, it's because I am. <laughs> Dave Scooby says, the world isn't flat, nor is it round. It is a vampire. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to, hey. Damn, I am going to see uh, the Smashing Pumpkins when they come back to Southern California with Green Day. If you're going, let me know. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> if you're talking about the six man tag, I don't think so either. It just, or excuse me, six woman, six person tag. There we go. Let's be uh, appropriate. Bobby says, I like that Taylor Rising is getting more opportunity to wrestle at NWA. I really liked. Look, the tag team with Markova and Taylor, I think, had a lot of potential. They just didn't do anything with it. And you know, I'll be honest, I kind of thought that they would they would take the titles off of Pretty Empowered, at least for just a little bit. It, it, it's kind of like by way of the booking of Natalia Markova, I feel like it kind of hurt Taylor Rising. Uh, <laughs> yes, Lamb, definitely. I should throw an Alliance shirt at the concert. That would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like uh, I feel like Taylor Rising and um, Natalia Markova would have been a good tag team to keep around because again, after M ninety five lost, all we have are the uh, the uh, King Bees, right? That's it as far as tag teams. After Pretty Empowered, they really with so many good women, they do need to stock up and have some add some tag teams to the mix for that women's division. Uh, what what they're getting out of this match, I don't know, and honestly. I don't care. I just hope it's a fun match. Um, lastly, I think the next thing we're going to, uh, the main event for tonight's show is going to be the World Junior Heavyweight Championship match against Colby Carino and my guy, Mecha Wolf. And I say my guy, Mecha Wolf, because I've watched Mecha Wolf wrestle more 
in Mexico than I have in the United States. I've been able to watch him wrestle in, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, Nashville, right? I got to see him multiple times in Nashville, multiple times in California, multiple times in, in Tijuana, Mexico City. Uh, I saw him perform in Mexico City with his band Monster Wolf. Uh, I got to see him in St. Louis. Uh, oh, Sean Vegas says it's not the main event. Well, it should be. It's a title match. What the hell? Okay, well, again, I haven't seen it. This is the pre-party, not the post-party uh, or the after-party. Well, it is for some people. Anyways, uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a match. Uh, I saw earlier Lamb said, uh, let's see, where did Lamb say? He said that uh, Mecha Wolf is a junior heavyweight. And he, yeah, the crazy thing, he he is. And, and what you, you look at Mecha Wolf, and that guy is, went so hard in the gym in the last last year 2023 and i it's kind of cool i got to talk to him at uh wrestling valley wrestling connection show uh just a few weeks ago in paris california and, and i spent some time talking to him and he told me how you know he had hit the gym so hard and he was bulking up but he said like it was actually kind of hurting his knees he was getting too much weight and and Mech wolf started off as a junior heavyweight when he was wrestling in puerto rico he's a former iwa puerto rico junior heavyweight champion world wrestling council junior heavyweight champion he competed in the cruiserweight classic at the wwe um and he had spent most of his career as a junior heavyweight but he had been putting on size to kind of uh you know help there they were you know they being uh Mech, Mecha wolf and bastia were kind of smaller when it came to the tag teams in the nwa and especially you look at blunt force trauma you look at murnox you look at the uh immortals you got some big dudes in there so uh, i feel like mecha wolf was trying to be big for that tag team and now that the tag team has parted ways uh it allows mecha wolf to kind of focus more now on the junior heavyweight division he told me he's been losing some weight he's been you know, he still is very fit. Don't get me wrong. He's still a very strong dude, but I think he is cut back on the bulking as much just to get the more agility in the ring to be a little bit faster. And again, if you've ever seen a singles match with Mecha Wolf, him and Colby have a, a style that I think would mesh very well together. Uh, I got to see Mecha Wolf versus uh, the Lucha scumbag Chris Nasty, who I know that uh, Lamb is well aware of, and that match was really really good chris nasty had to pull out all the stops uh it was a lot of fun so i feel like this match is going to be a very good uh match tonight and i think if it, it's not the main event according to sean vega but i feel like that was a missed opportunity totally should have been uh we'll get back to some more of your guys comments here in just a second i just want to see if i missed anything uh it's not the main event Bobby Batito says Colby is having a great reign as NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, I, he absolutely has. He's blown me away. I thought, and I, I think I wasn't the only one, that uh, they thought that after the pandemic that Colby, excuse me, not after the pandemic, after the whole uh, hiring freeze that the WWE had, that we thought Colby Carino was going to head back to the WWE. His father, uh, former World Heavyweight Champion uh, Steve Carino, uh, works at the Performance Center. He's he's a, he uh, is a coach training. We thought Colby was a shoe in for that, and the fact that Colby has stuck to the independence and has really taken again that uh, the Royal Crown Championship, if you will, the uh, the Junior Heavyweight Title, and has defended it all over. The united states I, I mean he really has put some stink on that belt in the most positive way possible and that's not a shot at carrie morton who who did very much the same thing but carrie excuse me uh colby has kind of taken it to the next level colby's been defending that title everywhere i mean new york uh virginia uh new jersey it's like the title's literally been defended everywhere and if mecca wolf were to win tonight who knows maybe you would see that title end up in triple a at some point um you know or or maybe this is the start to something bigger between colby and mecca wolf i don't know but I, I i'm very excited to see it steve g says yeah bobby he had a great run uh shall make a point out that yeah you know dropping that weight also is going to extend his career too you know you, you're 100 right and and as somebody who is a little on the heavier side too like uh you know when you carry extra weight man you feel it everywhere so uh, i do think uh, that would uh that does have play a role into it uh lamb says i think jeremy would have loved to send gun show to the nwa how dare you sir 
How dare you? If anyone should be wrestling the gun show, it should be uh, my pal, the neon phenomenon. You know, you know. Uh, I'd rather Mike Anthony in the NWA. Mike Anthony is a solid talent as well. Uh, I saw someone say something about Camille earlier, and I kind of wanted to go back to that. Uh, oh, uh, Roswell says uh, when it comes to the NWA that they need to create a real booking committee and have Corgan fade in the background. Let's see, like, Cor you're going to make me compliment Billy here. And uh, the thing about Billy is, number one, He's financed this whole deal. So what he says, what he does, I mean, dude is a rock star that doesn't need any of this. He can continue the rest of his life without ever promoting another wrestling show ever again. And what would we have? You know, there might not be an NWA today if it wasn't for William Patrick Corgan. With that being said, look, he's had some pretty interesting booking ideas that have worked really well. There's a lot of things in the NWA that I have enjoyed. I mean, look. Uh, it took a while, but Silas Mason coming into the NWA, that dude is a, an ultimate superstar. And I can't wait to see what's next for him. There's been other booking ideas that have worked very well for the NWA. There's some stuff that I haven't liked, you know, and and not anyone is going to hit 100% on their booking. And you have to also understand Billy's been doing this now for five years, six years. Give it time. Give it time. Um you know, nobody, I was telling my daughter this today because she was ice skating. Nobody starts off being great at anything. You have to practice. You have to try. You have to do things. The NWA ran more shows in 2023 than any year before as a entity. Okay. You know, modern day, I'm not talking about Jim Crocker promotions or Don Owens or anything like that. I'm talking about modern day NWA. No, no NWA singular promotion has ran ran as much as Billy Corgan's NWA last year. Fight me on that one. You can't. But that being said, not everything he's done has been hits. Some of it has been, you know, it stunk. Some of it was great. Some of it was mid. At the end of the day, it's Billy's decision. Whatever works, whatever doesn't work, it's all Billy's responsibility. So you got to give him credit for the good stuff if you're gonna if you're gonna give him the responsibility for the bad stuff. With that being said, I completely agree with what Lamb just said. I would throw money on Scott Amore if I was Billy. And I would too, because completely honest, Scott D. Amore, uh, he has a great mind for the business. I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Impact, but I, I feel like Scott D. Amore has probably received more phone calls from people named... Uh, of people from TKO, from people from, uh, well, maybe just TKO. You know, the thing, the thing is, is the head roll with the WWE with all these allegations. Scott Dean Moore is a guy that could probably slide right in and, and, and just keep that machine going. Uh, Bobby brings up Bobby Batito. Uh, Bobby Batito brings up Bad Dude Tito is wrestling at MLW Intimidation Games against Matt Riddle on February 29th. Expect Matt Riddle to get his face punched. Pretty hard. We're big, we're big bad do Tito fans here at the Alliance blog. And I would love to see him just smash Matt Riddle's face in. With that being said, guys, it is time for me to bid you adieu. Uh, this has been such a fun time. You guys really made it worth my while to step away from my wife and kids to spend my Tuesday afternoon with you all. Uh, I don't think you quite understand what you mean to me. And I hope that uh, this little offering every week is important to you guys as well. Um, I will be back on Thursday with uh, DK and Jaden. Of course, tomorrow's episode with the other lines, guys. I think it's going to be a very special episode. I hope you all check it out. It's going to feature, uh, again, Vinny Berry from uh, Russellville. And uh, they're going to be talking about his new book with Black Bart. I think it'll be very good. I hope you guys will give them your attention because it should be fun. But until next time, we'll see you at the matches. Thanks for joining the stream. This has been a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com. We genuinely appreciate your support. Would you consider subscribing so you'll never miss a future episode? I'd also like to remind you we do a live stream every Tuesday at 5 p.m. for NWA Power. You can find us on social media at The Alliance Blog. And until next time, we are The Alliance.